Hello, welcome to Art in the Spotlight, back for 2021. I'm Annie Roper, I'm the Curatorial Assistant for Talk Programs here at the Art Gallery of Ontario. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this week, we welcome Moya Garrison and Singwana in conversation with Michael Nayako. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to the TV Ready Commitment, our lead sponsor of talks and performances for generous, generously supporting this talk. And though we meet today in the virtual world, just want to acknowledge that the work of the Art Gallery of Ontario takes place on the traditional territories of Indigenous nations who have lived on these lands since time immemorial. The land we call Ontario is covered by 46 treaties, agreements, and land purchases, as well as unceded territory. The AGO is located in Toronto on lands that are the traditional homes of the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Huron-Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. Ontario continues to be home to many Indigenous people who live alongside settlers, newcomers, and people whose ancestors were enslaved across the Americas and the Caribbean. We are grateful to live and work on this land. Recognizing this in a meaningful way means making commitments to sharing and upholding responsibilities to all who now live on these lands and the land itself. And in our work, let us be mindful of these commitments. All right, so Moya Garrison M. Singwana is a Toronto-born artist and illustrator with a Bachelor in Design from OCAD University. Being of mixed background, Moya has a unique perspective on the world. With a large list of influences, his work explores many themes rooted in pop culture, the supernatural, and the absurd, subverting everything from simple daily interactions to social issues. Showing a deep infatuation with form and character, his art, whether zines, comics, murals, editorial illustrations, sculptures, or doodles, often features the human body and its relationship with the world around it. Proficient in traditional painting, digital rendering, his painterly and loose style is easily identifiable and engaging. Regardless of the media, he attempts to establish a relatable, humorous, and critical forum for diverse audiences. And Michael Nayarko, welcome back. He is a Toronto-based creative producer working in publishing, fashion, and culture, and co-founder of Tone Study Magazine. He's obsessed with reading magazines, drinking cortados, and people watching. And in case you missed it, you can check out the conversation about Tone Study Magazine as part of our Hot Take series, and you can find that on the AGO's YouTube channel. So uh, before I turn it over to Moya and Michael, just want to invite our audience today to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen for any questions. And with that, over to you guys. So what's up? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Just hanging out. I'm hanging out. So I guess um, let's get it started. Yeah, we just jump right into it. That's so. Um, okay. <laughs> no small talk. Yeah, I mean, who needs it? We did it already. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could talk about your amazing mug. Shout out to Blue Bunny. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Saint Hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, let's get into this. I mean, yeah. let's start with what, you, what we're looking at right now. And then I can just <laughs> jump into it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so this is something my mom, um, I, so before, before this um, kind of event right now, um, I spent the last couple of days looking through um, all my old sketchbooks, which I haven't done in a really, really long time. And I uh, found kind of as much material as I could that I thought would be kind of informative or um, matched up with some of the questions and um, answers and things we're gonna talk about. And uh, this is something my mom wrote in one of my sketchbooks, probably from like 2002, uh -huh. something like early 2000s. Um, my family used to go to Maine every summer. And uh, yeah, I was an only child. I'm an only child. So uh, my mom was like, here, do all these things. Keep yourself uh, busy. <laughs> so this is kind of what essentially what my days looked like in good. Maine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, George was my uh, stuffed animal at the time. It must have been uh, earlier then, because 2002 is a little old. What sort of animal? To be rock. <laughs> he's a bear. He's like he's like a standard, like the most like generic uh -huh. stuffed bear ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had <laughs> yeah. a I had a white rabbit named Stanley. 
Oof, uh, Stanley's a good name. Yeah. Stanley was hot That's fire. Like, and you know, it's interesting, uh, which we could get into it, but mm-hmm. I thought about, you know, with Stanley sort of came that moment of pretend that was uh, mm-hmm. coupled with like Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh and sort of creating spaces in my head, yeah. in my room with Stanley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to find adventures that happen and everything like that yeah like merging <laughs> the worlds almost everything yeah mm-hmm. um, so which brings me to my first question um mm-hmm. lately i've been thinking a lot about young michael um in relationship to how i've been creative but also just other parts of my life and yes. i think sometimes we are connected to that young self and other times we aren't or we're striving to and so I was wondering, is, yeah. is young Moya the person that's holding the pen or the pencil or like creating these, uh, this world? Or is it Moya that we're seeing right now? <laughs> um, honestly, I think I spend like, I think my entire job is to essentially channel young Moya. So <laughs> like, um, yeah, which is honestly a huge honor and I think um something I really enjoy and like keeps me young and curious and kind of uh joyful I guess um because yeah I mean I'm not like a regressed person you know like I don't I mean I don't think so I think I'm a pretty emotion like emotionally mature human being (laughs) um but yeah as far as the things I'm interested like I spend all day watching cartoons I spend all day drawing them um Mm. it's like the same things I was kind of infatuated with at that point, um, I still am. And I'm all that's changed is I've just gotten um, over the years, I've obtained the skills to be able to like make them look better. Mm -hmm. And then also um, bring my own kind of um, perspective to everything. And eventually, uh, which I've kind of started doing already, kind of, create my own world you know mm-hmm. that exists alongside all these other ones and um hopefully someone can look at what um i'm doing and going to do and have the same uh feeling or excitement mm-hmm. that i do when i see like anything that i loved when i was a kid you know mm-hmm. like um some of the next drawings in the uh in the images are like really early um kind of like copies of things I was seeing or like Mm -hmm. that's probably like a landscape drawing or something but I think in a few images there's like there's like some uh there's like some Pokemon stuff some like Mm -hmm. (laughs) some um yeah (laughs) yeah but this is like this it's funny because I looked at those old sketchbooks and I was like these this is all exactly the same like (laughs) it's just like more naive and kind of just like yeah yeah um yeah, but you know, character design, boom, right there. Mm-hmm, that's it. Um, yeah, that was like a a um, game that me and my schoolmates made up um, when we were younger, called Mist Cards, because we were playing Magic cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. But I guess the rate that we needed the cards, our parents probably weren't willing to buy them for us, mm-hmm. so uh, we just made our own. Um, which is exactly what I still do, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. I can't, um, I don't want to make a living out of like redrawing Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon mm-hmm. um, or uh, Akira or, or, you know, Astro Boy. I just want to um, make my own, mm-hmm. uh, my, my own, so um, um, yeah. So that's that, an example of that right there too. That's great. With that, when you're drawing, <laughs> um, or when you're creating these characters, are you thinking about mainly like the people in it or you, or in your mind, even if you aren't drawing them, are you thinking about the universe and like what that looks like visually through your sort of lens? Do you know what I mean? Like, do you have an idea of what the foreground and background in addition to the actual characters? Yeah, so, so, um kind of the stuff I've been doing or the stuff I'm known for now is very planted in our world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like all my references are um, kind of all around me at all times, you know, like the internet makes it really easy to see <laughs> uh, 
literally everything if you want to. Um, and so, yeah, I don't, I just have to, if, if I'm trying to create that world um, or make that world believable, I just have to look around me. And mm -hmm. as far as the stuff that I do for myself, which um, some of these drawings in these uh, images on the screen are in, in my sketchbooks and some of the work I'll create in the future, um, I do have a world that I, is very clear in my head that uh, is inspired by our world, obviously, but um, mm -hmm. has completely my own logic and uh, aesthetic and everything in it. Um, and it's actually interesting, like Fred and Jima are probably the two people that uh, when I met them, I was able to unlock that, that um, knowledge in myself, I guess, mm -hmm. because they're so good at it. Mm -hmm. And um, they're doing such incredible work as black illustrators. And I, they just made me realize alongside uh, our other friend, Julius Campbell, who mm -hmm. introduced me to them um that yeah these worlds can be like we can do this like you know <laughs> we can create these worlds it doesn't have to be just us filtering what is in front of us and inspires us in this reality we can um really invent and there's there's space for that because black illustration is not uh that massive of a community <laughs> um you know or at least at the the high level that uh some of some of our friends are doing this stuff at, you know? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I mean, I see that I'd always, I mean, as just, I think a person that's interested in the sort of cultural of creative things, especially like as a black person that's interested in black people making things, that space that you guys are occupying makes me want to cry, you know? <laughs> and I'm really, Yo. So be witnessing yeah, it's, that, you know, it's... Yeah, it's honestly such a an honor. Um, and Jima always says like, I think he said this to me a couple of times, but he's like, knowing that you and Fred and all these other great artists um, exist kind of, gives, kind of gives me a little bit of peace because mm. growing up, we really didn't see, um, I mean, we had like Boondocks, Afro mm -hmm. Samurai, mm -hmm. you know, for some reason, Rizzo was a part of every single <laughs> black cartoon. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know how that <laughs> happened, but um, yeah, it's it's an honor. And Jima always used to say like, I'm so happy that you guys exist because that means I don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. So so the more people that are, we kind of have alongside us in this community, mm -hmm. um, the more, we can kind of zone in on our own worlds and feel like we can focus, you know? Yeah. We don't have to try and hit every aspect of these industries all at the same time. Yeah. Uh, which is such, honestly, he's right. It's such a mm -hmm. great feeling and, and seeing everybody else do their thing just makes me um, extremely motivated and yeah. competitive and excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's really it. That's mm -hmm. exactly it. Um, Shout out to all of them, really. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, I mean, shoot, I don't even know. <laughs> it's like you have a plan that gets <laughs> tossed up, but um, okay. Oh, yeah, me... for sure. We can, we can stick to the plan, we can stick to the plan. Because I think the images kind of go along with the plan. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We can, okay. we can riff as that's going along, you know? Okay, sweet, sweet. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you've showed us a bunch of work and now we have things that are not work, but I'm sure that they are inspiration jump off. So um, mm -hmm. my question is about this sort of image bank or your reference book. And I guess I was wondering um, with that reference book, is that um, that Bible that never changes that you're constantly reverting back to? Or do you find that it's like constantly changing or maybe not even something that's super necessary, mm -hmm. like all that could just live in your mind and you're sort of creating based yeah, off. Yeah, of it's, it's definitely a combination of all of those things. Like mm -hmm. um, this image on the screen, these next few images are all um, just screen caps that, because like I literally have, like I, I remember seeing a Basquiat exhibit and mm -hmm they said that he had the TV on at all times. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I didn't grow up with a lot of TV. And like, I think when I was like 15 or something, I just bought my own and put it in my room. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah. So ever since then, I pretty much always have the TV on. <laughs> so, or like the computer or something. Like there's always something playing that's yeah, um, yeah. an inspir- like kind of an inspirational material mm-hmm. um, or something that's just entertaining. Like it doesn't even have to be something I'm directly referencing. But if I ever, if something catches my eye, like the scene from Kill Bill or, um, I think the previous one is from Jinro, which is like this anime um, called like Wolf Brigade or something. I don't know. Incredible stuff. But if I see something that has like colors, Mm -hmm. um, you know, composition, whatever, that is uh, something that, you know, makes me think, oh, maybe I can um, use that in the future. Mm -hmm. I document it. Uh-huh. But the funny uh-huh. thing is that I never actually look at any of these files. Yeah. So <laughs> looking back, like all those screen caps are from like, these ones are from like 2015 or 16 or uh-huh. something. And then um, that's just like the one on the screen now is just sometimes I just obviously make my own reference material. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and I just was like loving the shadows there. And like those uh-huh. are the eyes I needed. So I just photoshopped them in there. And I don't remember what I created with that material. But for the most part, I draw, if there's something I know that I have this kind of preconceived image in, of, in my head, I, I don't really need reference mm-hmm. unless it's a very specific uh, thing. So if it's like a particular garment with like a pattern on it, that's extremely detailed yeah. Yeah. or, um, you know, a, a logo or whatever stuff from this world that, um, I don't kind of have already stored in my memory bank in mm-hmm. my brain um then i'll use reference and just pull it up on google whatever i do that for the fit study stuff a lot of the time because that's yeah. an impression of um what I, is in front of me you know mm-hmm. but um for the laundry work i don't use any reference unless it's for a particular awesome. item um all the like folds and um all that stuff is just guessing <laughs> um or it's just it's, it's an informed guess you know yeah. um and i think that's where where my style comes from is is kind of my intuition i really trust my intuition at this point uh-huh. and uh and so i don't i don't want to copy what's in front of me i want to make it mine as uh-huh. much as possible uh-huh. uh so yeah i draw i draw things and then i look at my drawings again if i need to reference them so there's this almost like filtration of yeah. the original thing uh that ends up being you know it it ends up having my logic to it mm-hmm. so yeah um yeah these are all just like uh that dragon magazine is like a dnd magazine my uncle had uh when he was uh when he was growing up and he gave me like the entire stack of them alongside with his like calvin and Hobbes books Jeez. um all that stuff. So I just have all that material mm-hmm. around me all the time. So if I'm ever like, oh, I don't know what colors to use or whatever, I'll just flip through these books mm-hmm. um, until something catches my eye or makes sense mood wise or mm-hmm. energy wise. Um, but yeah, I, I also collect a lot of printed material, which I know you do too. Yes. Um, that's probably one of the things that kind of linked us up in the first place. Um, that is, uh, exactly is is that kind of infatuation with um printed materials in general like i would much rather have the real thing in front of me Mm -hmm. and learn about it and and touch it than uh than flip through these google images but unfortunately Mm -hmm. like i'd have to have a lot of physical (laughs) pieces of paper um, a lot of printer ink used (laughs) to be able to have images like this in front of me all the time Mm -hmm. so yeah that is a no that that makes sense and there's something about your work that feels almost as if it just comes through from your head and i mean that's something that you were explaining it yes i understand that a lot of it is like a real life but it 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 feels so original um and it feels as you were saying like through this moya filter which i think makes it really amazing and and automatically recognizable. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the goal for sure. <laughs> that's what we're working um, towards. Yeah. Yes. So that's one of my sketchbooks. 
Um, and it, uh, all my sketchbooks look like that. Like mm -hmm. ever since I was a kid, they have drawings all over the front and it's just kind of, a, I put stickers on everything and I put, I buy all my friends stuff. I buy anything mm -hmm. that I can afford that uh, is inspiring to me. Like mm -hmm. I keep like Ramane bottles, and random stuff um, around just because it's like, you know, inspiration is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm at the point where it's so chaotic and there's so much of it. I think that's the same for most people yeah. is um, it's actually much harder to not have that constant bombardment of images mm -hmm. than it is to, to have it. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy that uh, it's not just, yeah, it's, it's going through my filter and it's, it's mm -hmm. actually working and, and, translating so mm -hmm. that's great <laughs> was that a long process to to conceive because i mean even art yeah. for a long time um mm -hmm. yeah what was that process? yeah definitely or yeah what well was, yeah like yeah. as you can see from like the drawings on the screen like mm -hmm. that we've been going through like those are from when i was extreme like extremely young like mm -hmm. so um, you know, it started out as something I did for fun or that like my mom said, go do this just so you're not bored, mm -hmm. whatever. And um, during like kind of high school and stuff, I really just stopped, I barely was like, I was doing some art, but mm -hmm. um, I was mostly just like messing about <laughs> and was like having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that process is long. It's a, it's a lifelong process. It's not mm -hmm. gonna stop. Um, and um yeah, I guess that's what I've been working at. Like I haven't always been, you know, I'm not um, like a George Kondo or like a Picasso, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, I really had to work hard and just spend the hours doing this. It's not, mm -hmm. I, I was not um, looking at things and being able to perfectly replicate them or whatever, but like, yeah, that's, that's honestly the whole idea behind the only human stuff is like, mm -hmm my entire philosophy is having room for mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. and like showing that there's imperfections and that's a part of um, the exploration. Like my favorite part about doing this is, is the actual process and um, more than it is uh, the final result, you know? Like I'm not like looking at the final, I rarely look at the final result of what I'm doing, you know? Like um, there's a reason I'm always referencing the sketches and the sketchbooks instead of like my portfolio, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause that's where the real gold is. <laughs> yeah. Uh. You know, it's kind of like the, the, the beautiful 2 a.m. conversation that you have that inspires you to do the thing is almost more, almost just as important as the final product, you know? All the things that it took yeah, for you to totally. get there, all the ways in which you fell down, all the conversations you had, that random blip mm -hmm. from from whatever film you're watching. Those are the, the yeah. animation. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I have one question that's slightly off of process, but I was reading an interview mm -hmm. last night um, with uh, Barbara Chase Rimad with, um, on Lucy Magazine, anyways. And mm -hmm. so she's been drawing and making art since she was like seven got into a, a museum i think when she was 16 and wow. she was asked goals <laughs> i know right um she was asked at what point did you start thinking your work was like i guess part of the the larger canon of like work that she is known for and she was like as soon as mm -hmm. i was 16. and so my mm -hmm. question to you is like i, I mean i understand that you know we're still quite young and and you're building this career, you're building this sort of space that is yours, but I guess how far back do you consider the work that you've done part of this? Um, like the stuff, what would go into your retrospective? You know, I guess that's the sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, it's interesting. It's I think it's really spotty. Like um, it's kind of in and out until so like when I was really young, like I was looking through some of this stuff and I was like, damn, this is actually like, this is, oh, this is why everyone was like, oh, um, you're so good at drawing. Like when I was a little kid or, you know, stuff like that. 
even though I, I, you know, I never thought so. Like, I remember being super jealous of my mom. My mom is like a good artist. My grandmother's a good artist. My dad's a good artist. Like they can all draw um, pretty well. So I remember looking at my mom's drawings and being like, why can't I draw that like that? You know, like I'm cheese. Like I'm supposed to be the artist, you know? Like, um, so there's, there's periods where I'm really, I look back and I'm like, damn, I was really onto something there. And then those completely disappear. And I think that was just a part of, exploring you know I, I've never locked into a specific thing mm -hmm. um until I graduated university and I think I fumbled a lot throughout university um you know existentially like I was not really proud of anything I was doing um but I, I look back and I'm like damn um I was you know I was exploring and I was figuring yeah. figuring things out and now I humans I I really don't doubt I don't yeah I think probably the year I graduated which is 2017 is the moment um I was like yeah what I'm doing th there's a space for it and I think mm -hmm. it's gonna be you know it might sound like overconfident or whatever but it's like there there is this is gonna be something you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I think what I my perspective is actually kind of important because I don't see it much um anywhere else except in my literal friends so uh so yeah it, it brought me closer to them and and stuff and um made me feel like i was i was on to something and like I, I i was selling like artworks from pretty young like i remember being in elementary school and like all my friends would be like oh can you draw me this cartoon character whatever I'd be like, sure, like, give me 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever, <laughs> whatever it was. And um, throughout high school, I like found ways to sell prints mm -hmm. uh, of like artwork I was really like putting a lot of effort into at the time. Um, so there's always been a little bit of enterprise, but I don't think I ever felt like I was, I had a goal until mm -hmm. I finished school. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, free to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just since we're on that sort of uh, commodification of art <laughs> and we were just talking about, um, you know, the personal versus the commercial, um, mm -hmm. I'd like to get into that real quick, if that's cool. Um, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so, um, you know, right now you're at a place where people want your voice, you know, and... Um, yeah, I guess like what's, how does that one feel? And how do you sort of work uh, around providing time for yourself to just make for yourself, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because um, there was the kind of period where I was building up, like when I got out of school, I was building up to trying to get into this like get into a commercial world where I could actually make money from what I was doing, or at least just get noticed. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even think it's like, obviously on the scale of like the internet and like, you know, Instagram and stuff. Like I, I don't have that big of a following, but for me, it's like, this is enough. Like mm -hmm. um, I'm making money at the commercial work. I've, I've, I've been approached by like some incredibly like large companies that have you know, wanted whatever they're making or mm -hmm. admired what they're doing for many years. Um, and that's extremely exciting. But I, I also realize now that um, it's, it's, uh, it's not the be all end all mm -hmm. at all. So um, <laughs> it is really exciting. And, and I know many people that do what I'm doing, um, if they aren't already there are looking to, to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I just realized that my um, I can I can go much further than um, simply mm -hmm. achieving someone else's ideas or giving away my own ideas. You know, so what happens is I actually end up not use like I don't actually give away a lot of my favorite ideas. I kind of just archive them, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I keep them for myself, and I do stuff like. The thing that's the laundry show that's on the screen yeah. um and uh and then i i i dial it down <laughs> because um 
because you know i don't want to i don't want to give away my soul my soul yeah, you know like yeah. um i want to yeah i'm i want to be paid as much as i can for the piece that i do give away but i don't want to um i don't think it's fair and it also doesn't really make sense like to have all these companies running around like with their own identities benefiting off the same person's identity eventually it's it's an, i'm trying to think of an example of like you know, a designer or someone who does something big and then all of a sudden everything looks like that. Like, you know like what I'm saying? Vibe. Like a who? Like Balenciaga, like that, like... Yeah, exactly. Or like, um, you know, like Pyrex, like, yes. <laughs> or like something, something like that, um, or, or a acronym or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even have to be in, in the fashion world, but it's just... I don't want to be a trend, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I want to, I'm not trying to bottle and sell my essence. And if I do, I want to make every penny off of it. So. <laughs> <That's good. Thanks. laughs> um, so this show that we're looking at right now, that was what, two years ago, two, three years yeah, ago? Yeah, almost three. Yeah. That's 2018. Wild. Yeah. I, yo, I did, I did that entire, I, I painted all that stuff in the course of 21 days bro. <laughs> i didn't sleep <laughs> but i remember seeing the show and obviously being really impressed um and really liking um i think uh the textures of it all which is i think something that you just you're a wizard at uh, but also really thinking about the the pieces on the right side and thinking about um, that as these 2D, 3D um, pieces, which I thought was really Mm -hmm. neat. Um, Yeah. And I guess, you know, that sort of swings into, you know, what I wanted to ask you next, which was, um, you know, you talk about, you've spoken about in a previous interview about getting into 3D um, and taking this sort of, and taking your often 2D work into a 3D space. Um, yeah. And I guess I'm curious what that looks like to you, you know, whether that is, um, uh, sorry, um, figures or public art. Like if you want yeah. to um, that, your dreams. Man, I want to do all of it. Like um, this, this particular po- project, um, which was put together by Imad mm-hmm. and uh, is is like um company uh yeah Mm pete just you know i collected art toys when i was a kid like i have a i have a huge collection of of uh kid robot toys Mm -hmm. and all these art toys that are these objects that um are just extremely special to me and and uh really inspired me growing up and yeah i i just think that it's the logical step, you know, like what, how could you have more of an impact on um, a world that's so obsessed with iconography and, mm-hmm. um, you know, memorable images and, and physical things than having like a huge sculpture somewhere in the city or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like I, just from a personal ambition standpoint and also something culturally, I think this city can benefit like Toronto can benefit from mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is uh is like where's the art no offense like there's a, there is there's a good amount but Thankful, like you go yeah. to some other places and it's just everywhere. like everywhere and it it's um there's an animated film called Tech on Kincrete and if you look at the city in that it's just you know obviously inspired by Tokyo and and the experience of being there but you know, I just think there's something missing here. And because I grew, I grew up here and, and um, I love this place a lot. Um, I, I know what everyone else says about it. And I know how people that are, that are here feel about it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just missing those like latent cultural aspects mm-hmm. that are, that are gorgeous, you know, like, um, and so I, I think that, you know, my peers and I need to, to step up and find whoever it is that can make that happen and say like, okay, like give us a hundred, 200 K to build this giant, like, Mm -hmm. 
whatever in um, this open space that's not for anything um, or at least beautifying it. And, yeah. and murals are one thing, but our city has a big problem with graffiti. Yeah. And that's, 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 is what it is. Like graffiti is not always good. Art is not always good. Like <laughs> it's completely subjective. Right. So, um, but I think there's, there's some opportunities that don't, it doesn't mean that work has to be in front of a bank. Um, it doesn't have to be a privately created thing. Like we have this entire grant system, um, where our opportunities are created for, for great artists. And, and for some reason, it, it just doesn't seem that obvious. It, it doesn't seem that integrated into our infrastructure, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, like uh -huh. driving downtown, um, the architecture and um, some of the public artwork is not, is not shocking enough, you know, it's, yeah, it's I think it could be more exciting and, mm -hmm. and kind of surreal. And uh, hopefully I get to do that in my life, you know? Um, I know Fred has talked about the same things and um, yeah, just having like, just changing the way, changing the environment, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I yeah, totally. It's, a, it's an honor. I think there's something really uh, impactful about public art um, in that, yes, it enriches a community, but I think to think about public art all over like the greater Toronto area, I think can really um, sort of act as a beacon of light um, to yeah, the community. Like think about, you know, for example, something of yours in, I don't know, insert um, community in Brampton, Mississauga, like Jane yeah. Weston, whatever, you know, think about it being there yeah. and seeing. Um, think about it being an image of black people. Black people, right? <laughs> you know, that is, like, that's a, yeah, the thing you walk to school with. Um, yeah. How much power that could inspire um, and mm -hmm. give. I hope someone on the calls yeah. got. <laughs> has that public art connect because I think <laughs> that needs to be more um, more of a I, thing we're I working have no on. doubt I have no doubt we'll figure it out you know bro um, but it, it is a goal of mine like I, I just you know we need to see it we need to see some weird yes. some weird stuff like <laughs> I don't know <laughs> like I have I have no shortage of ideas of things mm -hmm. that um, can complement or morph our our environment you know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah I, I hope I definitely hope that like when I have the time and energy for that particular thing um, yeah some some people will be willing to help make it happen yes. okay. it's gonna be amazing um, and this is great oh, also shout out Sai for, Yo, for shout that out render. To Cy. shout out to Sai yeah. for real for real shout out to Sai mm -hmm. Sai Blake yo. <laughs> Simon Blake um, this is a random question. Um, I noticed that you don't, I mean, you do, but in a lot of your character studies, you don't have eyes unless they're in glasses. Um, mm -hmm. Why is that? This is, this, this, a, this is a question. Um, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really funny. Like I, I had uh, my friend hit me up for a job and that was for some billboard in LA a while ago. And he showed my work to the client because he was creative directing the project mm -hmm. um, or just heading it. And uh, they were like, oh, like we like his stuff, but he, he there's no faces. <laughs> um, and I was like, damn, yeah. <laughs> but I do have work with, with faces. You do. I, you I do, do think, I, yeah, I do think faces are important. Um, portraiture is extremely fun and, and you know, I, I love faces, they're amazing. But the, the goal of that particular body of work, the FIT studies, is, is not to describe the face and kind of, the face, you know, this is a, like the eyes of the window to the soul or, mm -hmm. or however that saying goes, um, is like, I'm, I'm studying, right? So mm -hmm. this is, these are mannequins for all I'm concerned because mm -hmm. I'm looking at fashion, I'm looking at, mm -hmm. you know, the shapes I'm looking at how these characters and these people express themselves mm -hmm. not via their face you know mm -hmm. like your face is going to change like thousands of times throughout the day 
and your outfit is going to stay the same, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And um, what does that outfit say about you? Mm -hmm. And um, I just think, you know, fashion is an incredible medium to express yourself. And uh, yeah, it's, that's, that's the whole point of, of this series, right? Is okay. to, to learn. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy people like it. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. It's something I really enjoy. It's definitely not the be all end all of what I'm trying to do as an artist, but uh, yeah, it's it's practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You're studying. laughs> Ooh, AI. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's why they're they're essentially placeholders. It's all about the physicality. It's about um, mm -hmm. how these people pose how their their body is shaped like mm -hmm. when you're doing quick studies in, in life drawing and stuff you're not um going into extreme detail on the face and so mm -hmm. um that's not what it's about it's the colors it's the the shapes the shadows and uh the position you know i got it got it that makes sense that makes sense um okay uh so my next question is, I guess a little, I'm just going to, have your ideas morphed with the social ch tides changing in the last year? Um, do you feel inclined to be more politically charged in your work, just given the ever-present uh, political conversation it, that's happening? Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's something I've struggled with for a long time. And I think it's it's a it's a good question to ask like any black artist because um, our work is 99.9% .9 of the time politicized, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that can work to your advantage as the artist. Like if, if that's the way your brain works and that's what you, you wanna do with your energy it, and you wanna have that impact on the world. Um, you're gonna make images about, you know, your daily interactions and, and how racism and, and politics affects your life. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I'm, I'm mixed race, so my experience looks different than, you know, someone with your skin tone and, and you know, your background. And, uh, and so I, I think that most black artists use their opportunity to like, as an artist, um, especially if they're doing well, really well, like um, I'm trying to think like Kadir Nelson or, you know, any of those like OG mm -hmm. artists that are just doing super, super well. And, and um, you know, in um, Kahinde Wiley, like painted the president, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's, um, that's incredible. And their work is this huge statement about um, blackness. And I think, mm -hmm it's just inherently there you know like i don't think i really have to do that much this piece in particular that's on the screen is like an obvious mm -hmm. um expression of how I, f I feel and i have for a long time i have lots of drawings not exactly like this but you know <laughs> same general <laughs> energy um and and that's you know there's that's for a reason mm -hmm. and um but it's not it's i don't feel i really want to um, get to where I want to get to without being blatant. So mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to be subtle and I'm happy to just keep illustrating people of color, um, you know, to all sorts of people just, um, you know, in an imaginative, interesting, mm -hmm. um, fantastical, supernatural way, mm -hmm. you know, because I think that alone in itself is, is, um, is projecting a belief system mm -hmm. into the world into the world that you know people are going to politicize regardless of what I do. It's just because of who I am and who my my dad is and who my mom is, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I felt any more pressure to do more, mm -hmm. but uh, I am. Yeah, it, it's going to happen when it happens. Like yeah. this, this just fell into place. Like. This was like, you know, George Floyd happened and um, America and the rest of the world were just like so angry. <laughs> um, and uh, I was too. And so, um, yeah. yeah, so the work, the work just came. Like, 
it, mm -hmm. it didn't take very long to make, um, but it gets the point across. And mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, communication is, is a huge part of what I'm, I'm doing and what I was taught to do like in mm -hmm. school and as illustration as a career path that's or whatever is literally the art of communication. So, yeah. yeah. I feel that. Um, mm -hmm. I think I find for me, you know, with um, the sort of uh, political and political social arrest of the last couple of months, um, I feel like there's this, been this interesting experience as a Black creative person um, either to level up in my understanding and I think also output um, yeah. as a black person and as like the sort of like black driven um, creative productions that I might get myself into. And I wonder if you're feeling that as well or if is it just like, I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I think like where I'm at now has happened because I'm just doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm definitely going to keep doing that. But uh, my experience as a Black person is obviously like a pretty nuanced one. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of our experiences as um, any like African diaspora mm -hmm. human being is like complicated mm -hmm. for so many different reasons and it changes person to person. But, um, you know, I... I can only be part of the, sadly, I can only be part of the conversation so much. Like I identify as a black man, but um, I'm half black. And so that entitles me to certain things. And um, and so I have to, I still, I do have to be careful about how I, um, how I put work out there and what I say and, and how I do things. Because at the end of the day, like, yeah, I do have more privilege than, you know, my dad does, for example. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's tough, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I need to um, impress anyone. I don't mm -hmm. think I need to um, go out of my way because um, I truly believe what I'm doing has a, has a, you know, there's a, there's a goal. And um, I think, all sorts of people will benefit from it. Um, I'm not doing it just to, I mean, obviously I want to make people of color and black people happy um, with what I'm doing. Um, yeah, and you know, if, if some other people are going to be angry about what I'm making, like that kind of <laughs> brings me joy a little bit too. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah, I, I don't think I'm, I don't think I have to go out of my way in any, in any way. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because mm -hmm. it's it's just gonna happen naturally. Yeah. You're gonna whatever, whatever needs to be said. On. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you're gonna come to whatever learnings and understandings as they come, and they're gonna manifest yeah. whatever that is. Um, we we going with the flow, baby. We going with the that's flow. That's it. That's how we can do like water, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like chocolate, like water. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Last thing for me before we get into Q and A. Um, yeah, I always like asking this when I talk to people. Um, what was the last thing you saw that gave you a sense of bliss? That just felt man. Good. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think I'm really lucky. I think I get to experience like I mean, bliss is a, is a very particular mm -hmm. sense of euphoria, but. Um, Feel, I feel like little little moments of pure like meditative joy mm -hmm. um, pretty often. And I think that's because so lucky. <laughs> um, sometimes I just have to stop. Like, I think the key to doing that is just like obviously being present, right? Like mm -hmm. just stopping and being like, okay. You know, I, I had a, a really, um, I the actually the last laundry painting the last big one the cartoons are still around but the, the of those three like more detailed larger pieces mm -hmm. i sold um the last one yes. the other day and yes. i i shipped it off wow. and thank you <laughs> um and so 
uh, and like lots of really insanely positive things like that have been happening for me lately, despite um, despite COVID and the insanity of what's happening on the planet. And I just like got in my car, which I recently got, and I just like you sat in my car front seat, too? <laughs> sat in my front seat, dog, and I just was like. I just like smile, like I just like smiled, you know, That's and great. I just was like, damn, like I can't, <laughs> you know, I, there's a lot of blessings in my life, like non-material, just like yeah. relationships, like um, friendships, everything. Like I, I, you know, I just felt like a very blessed person in that moment. Um, I don't know if that's bliss, but I think the last time I actually <laughs> felt bliss is I was up at a, my friend Alex, my friends Alex and Jade's farm, and uh, and they just have like a very beautiful situation up there and like a great property. And like we were I was literally just around New Year's, we were just like playing in the snow. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, you know, I just felt like the kid again and like mm -hmm. would just lie in the snow and just like look at the sky and hang out with their dogs and just laugh with some of the people I love most in this world. And, uh, yeah, that felt amazing. That was definitely a blissful mm -hmm. couple days. That's yeah. brilliant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, I feel happy. I feel joy. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> I think it, it really comes down to just like switching it up, you know, like it, it, mm -hmm. one of the like nicest things to do in this city too is just like head down to the waterfront because you forget all these things are there, right? Like you forget we have resources mm -hmm. um, like that. And uh and just go and breathe air, you know, like just breathe air, feel, feel the cold air on your skin, feel mm -hmm. the sun on your skin, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and just like, just be happy, just try and yeah. be happy. Sometimes you don't even need to try, it just like happens. Cause we, you know, we get into these habits of working and, and you know, life is not easy and, and that, and it differs from person to person. And, um, but yeah, stopping and just like, just trying to see like how good things can be no matter how uh chaotic things are around you is is a really great practice i think i agree i agree mm -hmm. thank you all right that was brilliant Thanks. you to share um, <laughs> uh, we got a lot of questions <laughs> i don't even know how do we um are you pickle yeah, do we, is it from, I guess q &A. So I could ask him. Um, yeah, sure. Attendee is asking, when going home, when going home, what's the one meal you want your family to make? <laughs> that's really, <laughs> not asking, but mine is oh, five plantain dope. and beans. So my mom makes a amazing, it's a Guinean dish, <laughs> but it sounds like it's like from everyone. It's fire. I know you're not. <laughs> oh Yo, I believe it. I believe it. Um, uh, my my mom and dad make really like killer East African food. Um, yeah, like uh, stuff called kachumbawi, which is like a, um, it's like a tomato and like onion and and lime like salad. Um, uh -huh. I really love that stuff. We make really good um, curry chicken and um, pilau. Uh, yeah, which is just like unreal, like a lot of flavor. And um, every year my mom makes an oxtail stew, uh, which is honestly just the <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupidest thing I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> like it's so crazy. She that puts with the rice? Like, in it and like, Oh no, she puts gnocchi in it, dog. Oh, it's crazy. It's hell? just like the most like rich, like satisfying. Just like dip a piece of bag into it. It's like mental. Jeez. Very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm um, hungry. <laughs> I had jerking and I'm gonna say this live. Jerking is not a vibe. I don't care. Yo. Uh, Chicken Double down. I don't care. Um, I agree. Too much ginger. Everything just tastes like a gingery, <laughs> sugary jerk yeah. concoction. Like no other flavors. 
Okay. Um, yeah, it's not the one. Dude, I'm wondering. Uh, I think we probably started a war with that one, man. I'm waiting. I know there's probably, the I know there's probably people out there that have a problem with that statement. All right, where are we going? Um, who kept your early drawings? You or your mom? I think you said your my mom. mom. Yeah. My mom. Yeah. Um, could you describe the world in your head, the aesthetics, the ethics? Mm -hmm. How is it different from our current world? It's actually probably a lot darker than you would think. Um, my mom calls it the, and my grandmother call it the shadow. Oh. Um, so, so that world is a lot more um, sinister. Um, but it's cool. Like I said it in that uh, Sabukaru interview it's like there's a lot of baggy clothes like I'm, I'm trying to think of like example like it's not really any of these things but it's like the world that Lil Ugly Mane raps about less like twisted and like psycho yeah. but like that kind of energy of um of kind of like Florida and like southern rap like mm -hmm. old three six and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff mixed with like witches yeah. and wizards uh i don't know like medieval i don't know it's 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 crazy man <laughs> there's a lot going on mixed with boondocks you know it's like of course you can't forget yeah you can never forget the boondocks like Jeez, it's um it's chaotic yo it's like it's not, it's... I, I yeah i, I can't <laughs> swear in this so i'm i'm just gonna stop talking but you'll see you'll just see i'm not I'm not gonna. Spoil I mean, it. you definitely get. I got it. I got like, it all copyrighted and everything, so seriously? I couldn't technically talk about it. No, no, I'm no, not no. playing. <laughs> um, Play white Cardi. But I will. Yeah, I'll get there. You know, I'm. I'm just working on all this other stuff right now. Mm -hmm, Eventually, mm -hmm. you'll see it. I'll just start drawing it all the time. It's all you'll see. After you pay the bills. Be over it. <laughs> the bills are paid, fam. <laughs> uh next one how do you manage to get out of creative blocks oh um that's easy i just don't work <laughs> uh i just take my mind off it you know mm -hmm. um i know obviously so there's lots of circumstances where um you are um, going to be in the middle of a job and you're you're having a creative block and mm -hmm. even then if you have oh we're wrapping up soon okay uh for creative blocks like even if you have like say you have 10 hours to do your deadline like mm -hmm. you can sleep later mm -hmm. take if you know it takes you like six hours to finish a piece take three or four of those hours and just mm -hmm. like do something else mm -hmm. like and um just lie on like I just like lie on the floor. I, I just, you know, do anything I can to take my mind off of what is in front of me. And then I come back and I sit down and uh and um I get back to it and usually that fixes it. And also sketchbooks are great because you always have something to go back and look up at. So as long as you just try and draw all the time and you'll come up with stuff and then if you're having a block, just reference your old work. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I feel like this is an important question. Um, just like I guess key things to give out to the people listening. What can yeah, as someone that has sort of made a career for themselves as an illustrator um, and painter and artist, what sort of tidbits can you give to the folks? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's really important to find your voice. Um, there's a lot of illustrators that do work. I mean, there's room for everything, right? Like if, if you're going to be an editorial illustrator or you're going to do advertising illustration, like you can get into that world by drawing similarly to these other people. But I think if you really want to have a massive impact, um, as an illustrator, you need to find your voice. You need to do the technical work. You need to do the hard work and the process work to figuring out what can make your artwork um, unique to you. Mm -hmm. um, so 
yeah, that's hard because I, you know, there's a lot of people out here doing like pretty much the exact same stuff or they have the same influences mm -hmm. and um, just look at that work and be like, okay, what can I do that will differentiate mm -hmm. myself from those things? Like, and, um, and then put yourself out there online and uh, wait for the art directors to come to you. <laughs> No, you can be proactive. Like <laughs> you can be proactive. Get your um, LinkedIn sales navigator. Yeah, feel like, like talk to people too. Like mm -hmm. I'm not saying like do this with me, but um, I've had some people just I don't always have time to do it, but I've had people just say like, "What can you just talk? Can we just hang out and like grab mm -hmm. coffee and um, tell me what to do?" And mm -hmm. I can't tell you what to do. There's no blueprint, but mm -hmm. um, I can definitely tell you what worked for me. So. Mm -hmm. I think that it's, I feel like that's good. It's find cool. yourself. It's really what it's yeah. about. Find yourself. For sure. I saw someone ask about what car I got. I got a 1991 Cressida, black Cressida, Toyota Cressida. <laughs> <laughs> apologies to everyone that we didn't get to answer questions. Uh, shout out to all of you though. Shout out to AGO mm -hmm. for holding us down and inviting us to talk Yeah, to you. thank you, Annie, and everyone yeah, else involved. Appreciate y'all. Uh, y'all are mm -hmm. truly the best. And uh, yo, shout out to Moya. Um, he is saying don't hit his really. lineup, but. <laughs> yeah, please, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Love you all, bro. Please, please. And yeah, I think it's about being I you. will answer. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have time to, so please don't. <laughs> Yo, shout out. Um, <laughs> shout out to MF Doom for enriching all of us to be our individual self, because that's what you were saying Chris. also, right? Chris RIP. Peace. And um, yeah, have a wonderful evening, y'all. Be good. Stay sexy, get this money. And uh, we'll see you in the virtual world or on road. <laughs>